Hey there Overlanders, I want to do a video today on route planning and uh, show you a couple of the tools that I use for route planning and uh, you know I think route planning is one of the key skills that you need to be comfortable doing when you're an Overlander because uh, you want to be able to go around on the internet and find these super cool places to go explore but then once you find those places you need to be able to have some tools that allows you to plan uh, routes to get there from point A to point B and uh, doing that on uh, highways and roads is pretty straightforward we're used to doing that probably in our daily lives using uh, Google Maps or Waze or other tools but when you uh, want to be able to do something off-road it uh, requires a little bit different skill set and a little bit different tools to be able to do that. So today we'll talk about uh, Gaia GPS which is a 2D uh, route planning tool that I use and Google Earth which is a great way to help you visualize those places that you want to go and perhaps identify some obstacles in those planned routes and also some really uh, it's a really great tool to figure out some epic campsites that might be uh, available to you on those routes. So uh, let's get started and I'll show you how I use these tools to plan my routes. So this is Gaia GPS and we'll go ahead and plan a route to Titus Canyon in Death Valley which is a really cool place to visit. So you can type that into Gaia GPS as you just saw me do and it comes up with a view of Titus Canyon. So for the purposes of this demo, we're just going to grab a short section of a, a route so we can move through it relatively quickly. Um, you'll see here how to use Gaia and why it's just a fantastic tool for planning a route. Because I can go into here, decide where I want to start the route, select that, and then instead of clicking a whole bunch of points along the way, I can just click that and see it fits it perfectly to the route click here again and it fits the next one and then click here at the end of my route and it fits that and I think uh, anybody that has used other 2D planning software you'll realize that this is awesome this saves you so much time when you are planning a route rather than having to pick points and uh, I'll show that a little bit later how you would do it with some of the other uh, software out there so we'll pick a name for this, uh, we'll call it Titus Canyon uh, Death Valley, and um, we'll go, and you can put, you know, whatever you want in here, I'm just kind of typing random stuff here, but um, just to show you that you can have a title and then you can have some description uh, about what you think is neat in this route or uh, details about it that you want to be able to remember when you pull the route up. So we'll type that in and uh, go ahead and save that off and then we'll uh, show you how to take that uh, route and export a KML file so that we can pull into uh, Google Earth for visualization. So we'll go back to um, the overview map here in Gaia. There's our route you see loaded um, on the map down there. And we can go up to this data area. And you'll see that it says GPX, KML, and I uh, don't really use the other uh, format. But anyway, we'll select KML. And you see down there in the lower left-hand corner, it's generated the KML file that we need. Just that quick. It's, it's a short route, but it's quick to generate those. So we'll go over and load uh, Google Earth um, and then we will import it just by clicking on that file. It'll pull that into Google Earth. Google Earth will consume that file and um, show you the route on the uh, 3D map. Super cool. Easy as that. And it's got a few place markers in there um, that it just puts in there by default. We can either name those, uh, move those and name those later or just uh, choose to not show them or delete them. Now we'll create a folder for our route and we'll name it Titus Canyon. And this is uh, something that we can put in uh, a number of routes that we would create, let's say, in this general area of Titus Canyon. Um, but we'll create
create this folder and then the root we imported the KML file that we imported will place inside that folder and we'll generate some additional uh, things that we want to house in that folder but for now we'll just drop this in there so there's our root now in order to be able to visualize it you need to show the path which I did there by just hitting that uh, drop down arrow and then we'll go ahead and select um, actually first I'm just go over these are the place marks that it auto created they're just uh, show the GPS coordinates of these locations and again like I said you can click those check marks and remove them or just leave them there but we'll go ahead and select the path and there's the information that we typed in earlier and now we're gonna go to show this uh, path tour by clicking this button and Google Earth will do its magic and uh, do a, a flyover of this route with um, just the default settings that I've put into, uh, I'll speed this up a little bit, default settings uh, that I've put into Google Earth for flyover tours. So it'll kind of show you, see so you can, uh, even from this view, we'll make a better view uh, in a moment, but even from this view, you can see uh, the overall terrain and uh, what it looks like, what kind of um, uh, road there is making its way through this canyon and uh, it gives you a really good idea without ever having been there gives you a good idea of what types of things you can expect to see and uh, areas that may be dicey um, with your particular rig so we'll just let this um, play through here and I'll show you how to make some changes to how that's going to look. So there's the end of the route we planned. And uh, then we can go in to the settings. And uh, if you go into the 3D area, you can go down to uh, this and do some different scaling of the topography in an area if you'd like to exaggerate some of the mountains and that sort of thing. But then we'll go over uh, to the next tab here and um, we can change the camera angle uh, that shows the perspective of our route. We can change the uh, the elevation that we view it at and a number of things and then when we play it again it'll zoom back out to the start and then uh, you'll notice that it's at uh, a different angle relative to the root and flying at a different elevation and uh, I've sped it up here a little bit so we don't have to wait so long to get through it but I think uh, you can tell that you can really get a great feel for what this is going to be like and um, you can go in at any point in time and you can pause it and you can zoom in to a particular area in the interest of time I won't go through all that now uh, this video is going to be long enough as it is but um, you could go through and inspect different areas of uh, the route and see if there might be some pinch points that would be difficult for your vehicle or you can get an idea of uh, how much sand there might be that uh, you might have to be aware of. Um, that sort of thing. There's really no way to measure uh, widths and heights and that sort of thing but it really gives you uh, a great overview of what this is going to be like and you can play around with these different elevations and and speed fly speeds and all that um, in order to uh, find the setting so I'll take just a minute here to show you how you can use this tool to inspect different parts of your route for things you may be looking for campsites you may be looking for um, difficult areas uh, that your rig might not be able to fit through uh, those types of things are just steep terrain sandy terrain so let's say we want to looks like there might be some little road scar here and um, maybe people have camped here so we could go over and take a quick look at it and zoom in There's a limit to 
to the resolution of it, but you can kind of see that, oh yeah, there's a road there. And if we zoom in a little more, looks like maybe some mine tailings or something like that. And if we wanted to see how you might get onto that road, it looks like we can follow it down here, here, Eh. looks like it kind of fades out but anyway you kind of get the idea you can inspect these different areas like that now let me just zoom out for a moment and go down to some area further down so this looks like a big sort of sandy wash area and I can zoom into that and maybe have a look to see whether it looks too sandy or not. Maybe I'll not be able to tell quite that detail, but you can maybe get some idea of what it's like through here. And then if I want to go look at this tight canyon over here, I'll zoom back out, scan forward in the trail, Whoa, here we go. Looks like a little tighter spot there. So let's zoom into that. Oh, looks like there's a vehicle there actually when they did this Google scan right there, which may be helpful to look at the relative scale of things. So it's not all uh, perfectly scaled. That looks a little bit crazier than it actually is. But you kind of get the idea that you can do some trail inspection here ahead of time. And again, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it gives you a better idea than a 2D map does. So then once you uh, have that uh, route that you like, you can go in and hit this uh, record button and you can record uh, that route. And so what you can do is you can start, go to the beginning of it, then I like to zoom out to show a perspective on where this route is and you can zoom out to show the whole earth if you want or you can just zoom out to an area that uh, shows a pretty big section of the map and say that's where you're going to start from. And then you go down here to the record button and select that and it'll turn red and then you can play your route and record it. So it'll zoom in, fly in from where you were and uh, run back through your whole route again and record that. So uh, we have a, a larger overlanding rig and um, sometimes we can take it on the Jeep trails, uh, especially in the desert. It's a little bit uh, easier to do because you don't have quite as much uh, overhead and side brush and that type of thing. Um, but there are still areas that we need to be aware of uh, with a little taller, a little wider rig than uh, your Forerunner or Tacoma or uh, Land Rover or Jeep or whatever your overlanding vehicle of choice is. So then you can uh, stop the recording. And now I'll go through and uh, show you a little bit about how you would use Google Earth directly to plan in more of a two-dimensional mode 
and uh, it, it, there's nothing wrong with doing it this way but I think you'll see um, I'll show you this and then also show you uh, Google Maps but I think you'll uh, it'll become obvious to you why Gaia is a m far superior tool to be able to um, plan your routes at least to get accurate um, mileage and uh, fitting the uh, route to the actual trail that's there. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and uh, get to where I want to start the path where uh, the route that I started before and go in here and uh, select the path tool and it'll come up with this dialog box that I'll name uh, the route that I'm going to create using Google Earth instead of Gaia. Move this over and now you'll notice that the uh, mouse tool on screen tool looks a little bit different and I'll go here and I'll select some points need to move this around a little bit so that we can maybe zoom out I think this will demonstrate the point I'm trying to make anyway. So I'm going here and I'm selecting points along the trail. And if I select points very close together, I'll get a pretty accurate representation of the trail with, with accurate mileages. But as you can see, if I click up ahead here, like I did in Gaia, it doesn't fit to the path. I can click here, it still doesn't fit to the path. So the only way to be able to get a reasonably accurate route is to go along and, and pick, 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 pick <laughs> as you work your way along the trail. And I think anybody that hasn't used Gaia, because it's really the only tool that I'm aware of that does this, you're familiar with doing this. And depending on how much of a uh, perfectionist you are, I'm sure it uh, drives you crazy having to, on especially these really windy trails and having to pick all these out. And if you have critical turns that you need to be able to make if you uh, get a little sloppy and um, don't watch what you're doing, you can uh, get very inaccurate uh, routes. So I'll go pick a few points here uh, so that you can see uh, the difference between <clears throat> the route that we laid down before uh, and imported as a KML from Gaia and the route that we are just creating here in Google Earth. So the pink line is the one that we created in imported from Gaia and the white line is the one that we created here in Google Earth and you can see it's just a point-to-point -point line uh, that doesn't fit the path very well and yet the pink one we imported from Gaia it fits the path uh, very nicely and uh, in as you remember, it only took us just a few clicks to fit that entire section of the route, whereas we had to click lots of points in uh, in Google Earth in order to try to fit this path, and it doesn't do a very good job of it. So your mileage is going to be off, your GPS coordinates is going to be off, and it just takes a whole lot more time to uh, do the planning in that. So we'll just pop back into Gaia here real quick, and um, take this route and make it full screen and zoom in here just a little bit so this is uh, if you remember we just had to click uh, just a couple of points and to be honest I probably could have clicked the beginning and the end and it would have fit that whole line with just two picks so now we're going to go into uh, another 2D example using Google Maps. I'm sure many of you have used that uh, to plan routes um, on highways and that sort of thing. But we'll go in here and type in Titus Canyon so that it pulls us uh, over to that path. There we are. We'll zoom out a little bit and uh, go over to a section of the path that has some twists and turns in it so that we can demonstrate uh, how you'd go about uh, planning a route using this tool. So we need to go down to a place called My Places or Your Places and click on that and that's where you can do your uh, route planning using Google Maps. 
We click on the maps section here and uh, create a new map. And that'll give us some tools to plot some points. And this is uh, really similar to, um, oh, I guess we need to go back into Titus Canyon now that we've switched. Um, Google My Maps is different than Google Maps. And so we once we went into that application, now we need to go back in and find our trail again. But it's easy to do. So there's our trail. We'll move over here a little bit and uh, pick this tool which is, allows us to uh, actually there's a few different tools up here for directions and place marks and uh, route planning but we'll select this one and um, go ahead and start plotting some points here so this is not as nice as Google Earth in that you just have a plain old 2D map um, although we could pull up a satellite view if we wanted to, but you can see here I clicked up there and it doesn't fit the path. So just like the Google Earth tool, uh, there's no automated uh, route fitting tool built into it like there is in Gaia. So this takes a lot of time. Again, you're, you're clicking points demonstrate here again just to sort of drive it home because I think it's at a really important point so I need to go in and click 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 and my route that I plan is only as accurate as the time I want to spend and when you're planning routes that cover 50 or 100 miles you can uh, I think imagine just how long it would take you to do that uh, with uh, just picking points like this so Gaia saves you a lot of time on these routes so there's a few different ways you can access Gaia. What I've been using for this demo is the web-based one, as you can tell, and it works perfectly fine. And then there's a great uh, app, uh, the Gaia app, that you can use on your iOS or Android uh, device. I like using it on my iPad. I probably do just as much planning on my iPad uh, using the Gaia app as on the uh, web-based one. In this demo, I just chose to show sort of the basic features of Gaia and how you can use it in a, as a tool in conjunction with Google Earth. Uh, but there's a lot to the app. You could do many, many demos um, to go through how to use it, and many people have done that online. You can access it on YouTube. Gaia is a free tool, uh, but if you sign up for the premium package, as I have, um, you can get these great overlays, which is one of the ones I was using here was the... Uh, Nat Geo overlay that shows you uh, lots of neat map features and terrain and uh, much higher resolution uh, images for planning. And but they have MVUM motor vehicle usage um, maps. They have weather overlays. They've got um, national park overlays. Lots of different things that uh, you can access through map layers. So I uh, encourage you to go check it out. And like I said, you can start using it for free. So I encourage you to load the tool up, plan your route, and get out there and drive it. I think it's a, a great tool and something that you'll find incredibly useful going forward in your overlanding adventures. Take care.